we start this show on a quite a sombre note today with the passing of former Pope Benedict XVI at the age of 95. As a cardinal charged with enforcing doctrinal purity, Benedict was given the nickname God's Rottweiler for his uncompromising views. And he was the first Pope to step down in centuries because of ailing health in 2013. Tributes have been pouring in from around the world and people have gathered in St Peter's Square in Rome to pay their respects. Joining me now to discuss this is Madeleine Page, a spokesperson at Catholic Voices. Uh, Madeleine, thank you very much for joining me. Now, how do you feel with regards to this? I mean, Pope Benedict, he was quite ill for some time. Um, he, ha he has passed away. It's a very sad moment for the church. Um, he's done very well, he's 95. Um, and he's had a great impact on, on many, many Catholics, as we've seen um, in all the tributes that have come in. So it's a very sad moment. It's a moment when we can all be nice in prayer for him. Um, as our, our Cardinal was, was saying um, earlier today as well. Um, it's a sad moment, but one where we can hopefully reflect and, and use his legacy now to, to move forward. Now, uh, what did he mean to the Catholic community? He was, um, he was a great figure um, for me. Uh, personally, he's um, made many, uh, worked really hard to restore a greater respect um, awe and dignity to our Catholic worship. Um, he did this in particular by more widely permitting the traditional form of the Mass. Um, and this has helped me personally to develop a, a deeper understanding of my faith and a love of God. So that's something that I know myself and, and many other Catholics will be very grateful for. Um, and he's also been a real humble and 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 show great servant leadership. Um, and this can be seen even in his, his retirement as Pope, when he had that recognition that he was no longer fit to serve, that he um, knew that there were a lot of changes that needed to be made in the church, and that recognition he wasn't the man for the job. So to step back and allow somebody else to do that, I think is a real humble thing that, that we can all learn from as well. And I should imagine that the service then will be, I imagine, they said on the 5th of January, um, assuming there'll be lots of preparations and things that are taking place. How, how will you uh, commemorate him? It's a great question. I don't think I've been able to give much thought to it yet. Um, I would love to be able to watch um, the funeral online. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to Rome, unfortunately. Um, so I definitely would like to watch it online and I'll be praying for him. It's something, it's a, it's a great tradition of our faith that we pray for the dead um, and we ask that they receive the mercy and, and love of God that we all need as as human beings and um, so I'll be doing that as well. Mm. And of course the world will be watching in your view how have you because if, if you look at the way faith is these days it seems that the Catholic community seems to be shrinking um, for you how do you you know keep with your faith because a lot of I mean there's been a lot of people being put off the, by the church and a lot of things have been going on within it. And what, what, what keeps you with your faith? Um, I think, I think knowing that it's the, that it's the truth, that what we, that what I and, and my friends and, and the whole Catholic community stand by, I, you know, really believe that that is, that, that is the truth and um, that we are, we are living, be it both um, in terms of the teachings of the church and then also um, with our faith and, um, I'm really privileged to have some amazing Catholic friends and be part of a, a really wonderful traditional Catholic community um, that really helps um, support each other. Um, I'm not sure I would agree that it's that it's diminishing. I think in, in some ways it it may appear like that, um, but actually what we've seen has been um, a greater move towards um, what I would say is sort of authentic Catholicism. Um, especially through um, through COVID and, and through some restrictions that, that we experienced on our worship. Um, I think it's really meant that for many of us, we've become even stronger in that, that seeing something or, or the possibility of something being taken away. Um, it's, you know, they say you don't know how much you love something until it's gone. Um, and I think that's something that we experienced very profoundly um, over the last couple of years. Um, so that's definitely, um, certainly for me anyway, made me want to not, not waste any opportunity. He was an incredible man, man, really, and, and he was quite ill for quite some time. Um, did, did this come as a, as a surprise to the community? I mean, he's very old. I think it was a surprise. Um, obviously, it's it's always a matter of, of when, not if. Um, I think, you know, um, Pope Francis said just on, I think it was on Wednesday, um, you know, asking us to pray for him and that he really wasn't in a, in a good state of health. 
Um, so I don't think it's, you know, as you say, he was he was an elderly man. I don't think it comes as a surprise. Um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't, you know, it's not felt anymore uh, deeply by the church. And I know his loss will be felt by many for, for many different reasons. Um, and it wasn't that long ago that he was here in, in the UK. He made um, the first ever state uh, papal visit uh, back in 2010. Um, you know, the streets of London were, were filled with, with Catholics welcoming him. Um, so I think for, for many people as well, that loss will be felt knowing that he was here only 12 years ago. Madeline, for you then, obviously th this man has left an incredible legacy. For you, what does what does your faith mean to you personally? For me, it's um, it's my whole identity. It's my my way of my way of being. Um, my faith sort of dictates how I live my life, um, the choices that I make, um, and 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 the way that I that I am that I strive to sort of interact um, interact with other people. We're we're called to be. Um, to, to love Christ and to love others as, as Christ loved us. Um, so that, and that flows um, through in, in hopefully in, in the choices that I make in the way that I um, advocate for, um, for people from uh, conception right the way through to natural death, for example, um, the way in which we um, speak to, speak to and, and help the vulnerable, um, the poor, the, the sick. Um, I think it's a, it's really how 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 we as society should flourish um, if we live an authentic Catholic life. Well, Madeline, listen, it's been very lovely to talk to you. Thank you for sharing uh, your thoughts. That's Madeline Page. She's a spokesperson for the Catholic Voices. Uh, thank you so much.